Hello! Welcome to From the Depths. Now, what are we doing today? We're going on again with the tests that I've been doing to try to find out about the effectiveness of armor and such. Now, those of you who have watched my other video, this is basically a, something I'm doing for myself to find out the effectiveness of different kinds of armor against different kinds of weapons, and similarly, different kinds of weapons against different kinds of armor. And <clears throat> so begins my testing. Now, I've done crown cannons, I've done unadvanced uh, weapons. Now, the advanced weapons is I'm um, quite confident in protection, and crown cannons I'm quite depressed. Now we come to today's topic, which is missiles. Now, missiles, um, now I like to use an average side kind of a weapon to use, that why, because you know, with the crown cannons, with the advanced cannons, I used a 260 millimeter caliber gun, uh, halfway of the caliber. But generally, people use um, a average, so that's sort of an average of size going around. Now, crown cannons are very usually only come in really big sizes, so I use a very big crown cannon. Now, missiles are a bit confusing because they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes and most importantly they come in groups and an individual missile missile isn't that effective though can deal a lot of damage and in this situation i've opted for basically three missiles and as you can see here it's a variable thruster double the amount of thrust uh, two fins a fuel tank basically a very short range faster uh, flight speed missile now Generally, the other kinds, the kinds of missiles I have are with more range, have slightly less firepower. But I wanted to, for this test specifically up the firepower compared to what I usually use to something that other people might you be using. Now, onto the test range. As for those of you who haven't seen, this is basically some ideal weapon armors I use. Is uh, first, the we have three layers of wood spaced out. One layer of uh, advanced alloy, two layer thick uh, metal, because uh, for those of you who don't know, if you stack metal up right next to each other, they give bonus, they gain bonuses in their armor, which increases their survivability. And then explosive reactive armor and one layer of metal, then heavy armor. Now, those of you who watch my other videos, you notice the space here is usually occupied by a shield generator. Now, missiles aren't really deflected by Shield. So it's kind of pointless to actually test the shield generator here because they just go straight through. Now, what I will probably do afterwards is I'll do a quick little, little a if I've got time. If you've got time, I will do a small little test of um, anti-missile defense systems. Just talk about them a little bit. Now, again, remember this is sort of for my own sake. Uh, at the end, I will compress all the information into a much more, you know, uh, a much more shorter video, explaining to everything I've learned from my my research videos. Now, all right. Now, our first target for the day is the uh, three wooden trees. Now, we're using our missile here is um, three high explosives and three of them, so nine high explosive charges. See how this fares against the wood. Quite devastating indeed, isn't it? Completely ripped away all three layers and done critical damage against the rear part. So, definitely a weapon we can use against. Ships and aircraft, or if they're made out of wood. Though, three layers of wood is very something cumbering kind of protection system. So, let us move on to the next thing. Alright, now, missiles against lightweight alloy. The preferred weapon to be using against lightweight alloy. Because lightweight alloy is usually made out of... Ooh. It's typically you make your aircraft out of lightweight alloy. Now, that system has completely devastated that. Hit it. Now, 
in the ideal situations, you have to be moving target. Uh, you have to be moving target if you have a ally on. But if you do get hit, probably not very good. It's quite a bit of damage. Quite worrying. Hmm. Huh. Nevertheless, let's move on. All right. Now let's see how this fares against double thick metal. Now see. Now here is where it gets interesting. Double thick metal. Oh, that's a bit strange. Because the blocks behind it has been destroyed. I'll have to do that test again, but it seems that the metal itself has not been damaged at all. That's quite strange indeed. Oh, probably a little... Just a little error that happened there. Maybe, possibly. Well, that's something to consider now. If, the, if the, the blast is going to go straight through the metal and not care about the metal itself, then... Yes, it seems to flow straight through the metal, which makes the protection questionable against missiles questionable. Well, to be honest, there are a lot of worrying. All right, now let's start coming up to the different types of uh, different interesting. Now, especially reactive armor, technically would not uh, be working here because it's more to prevent uh, heat ammunition and such. But it's still a layer that weapons still have to go through, so it's important to check it. Again, another the situation where it hasn't done that, that much damage to the armor itself, but it has completely destroyed everything important behind it. I did not know this could happen. Either this is a... Uh, Bug, but all this is legit what's supposed to happen I'm not too worried about how these things get damaged because there's these gaps on the side so explosion radius going through the side is no problem but our crucial equipment here was behind the metal if this is really how it's supposed to work then I have to then it's a good thing I've uh, discovered this now or uh, if it's a bug then it's a good thing I've discovered this either way gives uh, me something to consider when I'm pro making protection against missile systems. Okay, let's go on. Now, we're going to test this against heavy armor. Now, those of you who watch my other videos will know I... I hate heavy armor. Um, it's very expensive. Uh, well, it does uh, give results. It does give a lot of protection. It hasn't even flinched at that, that uh, blast. See, more damage has been done to these beams than has, uh, that has been done to, to these heavy armor blocks. It's important to remember that. Because, indeed, these things are quite devastating. And But heavy armor seems to not even care. So... In short, from just the first little test we can see here, is that explosives very useful against um, lighted alloy and wooden beams, but metal beams are uh, quite reasonably resistant to explosion blasts. Now the question is, what is the next kind of thing we're going to do? This of course fragmentation warhead. Now. Fragmentation wire, it is important to know we can actually set the cone. So that's now I'm gonna be pretty much do what I always do with fragmentation wire heads. I'm gonna set fed the frag cone for the one to one degree, so it's basically a little bullet that fires out the tip of the missile at the front, and then I'm gonna set the next one to ten degrees, so it spreads out a bit, and then the next one I'm gonna set to twenty degrees. Just so there's a bit of a spread. Main focus point and a spread shotgun blast. That's just how I like to do things. 
and assign more hit to all similar missiles. So we now have frag boys. Now give me a moment while I reset the firing range. All right, now let's test fragmentation warhead head against wooden beams. Very important to do this. So, fire. Now, comparatively, we see that um, outside outside layer things have been more okay, but everything else behind has suffered devastating amounts of damage. And that's it's all the power of the fragmentation war. It is no, it doesn't do that much. Uh, but the moment it punches through, it's going to wreck everything inside, and the top layer of our blocks have been completely destroyed. Now, let's move on to our next layer here. Well, not much of that to do. So, we're looking at light rate metal alloy against fragmentation fires. Now, I suspect with the amount of damage that has been done to to uh, wood beams, this isn't going to not survive much either. And indeed, so. It's cut through and destroyed blocks behind. Now, an important thing to know is that in some tests I've done so far of cram and um, advanced cannons, is that the frag warheads tend to be quite devastating indeed. Don't tell anyone because we don't. You don't want them to get suddenly nerfed, do you? <laughs> All right, now let's fire this against double thick steel. Now, the double thick steel surprisingly is not capable of standing up to it, though it hasn't does hasn't doesn't has seem to have been completely useless. It has stopped quite a lot of it. You see that no part of damage has been done to the things behind here. Not like the wood of beams where everything was ripped, and see, actual only one block hole was actually created. So effectively, frag warheads do tend to not get so well through the double thick steel. Now, let's go up against explosive reactive armor. Here we see it was pretty much cut through because unlike the double thick steel, the one thick steel has uh, only one layer and it has an explosive reactive armor on top of it, which has a little bit of protection, but only really protects against the uh, Weapons. But it's still something I want to test because I will generally will be covering my units with explosive reactive armor where possible. I guess there's only one thing to test this against, uh, and it's the heavyweight now. Yep, only a little bit of darkening, not no real damage to it. Was there any doubt? I don't think so. That's generally how it goes with the heavy armor. It definitely does not flinch to anything. Except the most extreme of weapons. Well, Fight War it's quite decent. Especially if you want to do direct damage. Though I think I will try and use more explosives. Now, what else is we have to, here that we need to check. Of course, there is the Thumper and EMP. So, let's go ahead and see how well our EMP fares. Welcome back. Now, let's go ahead and test missiles, the EMP warheads against wood. Now, Obviously, of course, wood does not uh, transfer EMP, but it's nevertheless important that we check what happens. Because sometimes the EMP blast does travel through, or the blast is enough to reach things. Not here, definitely not. Oh. No sort of uh, immediate results, no real cares. Not there. Now, it's like an alloy. Now, it's important to remember I, I've actually made these little sections of alloy going straight down and of course wooden beams to, in between to isolate everything and you'll notice here I put four surge protectors this is important because four surge protectors is quite cheap 
uh, not that expensive, can easily be placed anywhere I, I need them, them crucially. So real tactical bit placement that could be easily defeat EMP. But the question is how much EMP can they actually stop? That's the question now. If we actually fire here. Oh my, yes, definitely. It seems one and a half surge protectors is enough to halt three large EMP missiles. Which gives it does drop the question is why would I even want to use EMP warheads? In my personal experience it doesn't seem very useful. No no let's let's continue. Oh thick steel we'll see pretty much the same results. One search protector is gone. The second one slightly damaged. Now, again, same results. One EU third protector gone. Now, for the most part, these are going to be guaranteed to be the same, and it seems, unless there is a really, really, really big swarm of uh, EMP missiles coming in, I should probably not be too worried about it. Now, here comes the interesting thing about EMP if we actually fire it against heavy armor. You'll see that the search protector behind it has been damaged because what we need to remember with heavy armor is that heavy armor is susceptible to EMP, it can get the damage to EMP. So the EMP tends to damage it first and does not go to anything crucial, which makes it's a heavy armor quite ideal if you know you're going to be hit with a lot of EMP because then you don't have to actually put surge protectors because the EMP is just going to die on the heavy armor before it gets through. Though the cost of heavy armor is still worrying. Right. So. Really, all the only thing we need left to test now is, of course, the. Where are you, you little bugger? Why is this list not fucking alphabetically sorted? Thumper head. Okay, so the thumper head causes physical damage when it hits a target, so. In this sort of case, we need lots of fuel tanks, lots of first speed. I'm gonna go ahead and put here. Replace our fuel. My EMP warheads with fuel tanks. If I could bloody find the thing, because this list is not alphabetically sorted. And of course, a. Where is it? Laser beam rider. Also variable thruster max speed. This is really our only setup you'll have for the thumb warheads. Now three fuel tanks, a variable thruster at max speed. Need laser beam the rider and a thumper head. Okay. Let's see. About how well this fares. So, thumper warheads against wooden beams. Oh, oh, camera, camera, camera. So, definitely not getting through three layers of wood, and for that moment, any sort of space dominant is not going to get through it because it does damage to only one block and one block only. I used to think as um, these ram missiles are going to be only 
useful in some situations. Now, let's see about heavy metal armor. Again, um, I mean lightweight alloy. Ooh, seems I'm a bit tired. I might need a cup of coffee after this. Now, lightweight metal alloy, you can see the results. Is it's quite easily punched through it, got done quite a lot of damage to it. One block it contacted with, and the other things, not so much. Now, question comes. What about double thick metal? Can it do anything to that? Nope, not really. It seems um, for me that these uh, rhyme missiles are really going to be useful against I mean, they have extremely high amounts of speed. I want to quickly see here. Yeah, they speed up quite fast. Um, explosive reactive armor. Probably the same situation we're going to see. But nevertheless, it'll be interesting to see how uh, it fares. The explosive reactive armor completely stops it. Oh, some damage actually went through the, to the back blocks. Important thing to remember. I have not seen so much use of the Thumper War. It's probably more useful when you're making a harpoon system, because it just adds that little bit of extra oomph. Excuse me. And damage to heavy armor is nothing. Well, so that's done with. Pretty much all there is to check out on on uh, missiles. It's a bit of a pity. Not much to do here. This video is going, going to be shorter than the other ones. Certainly. And in the end, I think, while truly the warhead I would want to use against sort of against the heavier armored ones would have to be um, fragmentation warheads. Find it because it's, all right, there, yeah, fragmentation warheads. That's what I'll use against uh, heavier targets. But if I'm working against at air and air targets, anti-air uses, it'll definitely have to be explosive. I personally think I will avoid the EMP warheads because they don't seem to be that effective, especially if a person just places a few surge protectors on. Well, certainly if uh, this is just a small little rack here, if I had like 10, 20 missiles, because that's typically how you use missiles, you use it in swarms, not just a few little missiles, or uh, massive volleys, long consistent volleys. Well, protection-wise, mm, I'm a bit worried about that, the, the HE blasting through, probably bleeding around the sides, this. But mostly, you know, my ships will be safe with the double-thick metal steel, if I use that. Lightweight alloy on the aircraft, definitely are not. I'm going to definitely, when I build my aircraft, I'm going to cover them in steel uh, to give them a, a better protection. All right, so now now, of course we were just test uh, if I system says we were just testing how much damage could certain things takes from a direct head, but it bears I think mentioning not necessarily for myself but for people who are doing it, you can't stop missiles beforehand with new anti -missile, missile defense systems. Now I tend to not use um, laser anti-missile defense, I used to use cannon ones, but this is quite quick and easy to set up something that actually works. So, let's go ahead. I've got a little target there at the edge and it's going to fire a missile. And we see there, let me watch carefully this time, that at the moment, Oh, that missile's making it. Missile's making it. Oh, got close. No cigar. Oh, that one got taken out. 
Yes, indeed. Um, lasers are very good against uh, taking out missiles, though I tend to use the automated cannon system. So effectively, if you've got a good laser, you don't have to even worry about, about uh, missiles. But I tend to be one to, for my experiments, know exactly what's going to happen when I get hit. Oh! My name is Vincent Karma. I hope you have a nice day. Enjoyed watching. Goodbye.